Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Sam I B began to doing political commentary for the media speaks. Bringing you the dunce cap of the month show. I'm f I told Facebook I'm fighting a horrible ear infection here, so I don't know how loud or how whatever I am. Or God willing, this won't last. It's got me mildly worried. All right, friends, heading into it. What if we were visited by another world? What if that other world had advanced technology? What if we were just visited by the microwave in the break room? Yep, it's the Dunce Cap of the Month show. And yep, that is exactly what happened. I'm going to go to screen share here for the Media Speaks people. This is from uh, reddit.com, although the first two stories I originally found on Odd News, so shout out to them. Signal that baffled astronomers for 17 years traced to observatory microwave oven. Yes, it's true. Uh, the I guess the original story here, um, I'm loading it here, SFGate has it posted. I don't know if they were the first or not, but we're going to go with it as it loads with the speed of an abacus. I think it's funny that uh, so much time has been spent, particularly on this finding, because it was so baffling for his so long. <coughs> for 17 years, told you, astronomers at a well-known Australian radio telescope known as the Dish had not been able to figure out the source of a strange vexing interference. Now they've solved the mystery, and the culprit was right under their nose, rather than in a galaxy far, far away. Simon Johnson, head of astrophysics at the CICERO, the National Science Agency, told The Guardian that a couple of times a year, signals known as puritrons per were detected within five kilometers of the park's observatory in, North, in New South Wales. The first theory was that the peritons were caused by local lightning strikes. It says, though, that on New Year's Day, the observatory installed a new receiver to monitor the interference, and it detected strong signals at 24.7 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz is the signature of a microwave oven. When scientists tested the facility's lunchroom microwave, no peritrons were found, at least not at first. Oh, but it goes on, of course. You know about the dump cap of the month. But when the door of the microwave was open while food was heating, one might do a check on a reheated dish. Bingo! Peritrons filled out the filled filled out like microwaved popcorn. Complicating matters was that the dish only registered the peritons when it was pointed at the microwave, so it had to be somebody testing their food at the same time the telescope was pointed at it. How much bad luck can you possibly have? I love it. Astronomers generally operate the telescope remotely, but several maintenance workers are on the site during daytime hours. Little did they know that reheating their coffee created an enigma that would remain unsolved. For almost two decades. I told you you don't want to miss the Dunce Cap of the Month. I got two stories left for you. And of course, you know, we have the big winner. But this this needed mention. It's from CNN. Their own Dunce Cap. Hawksmore. I've named them Hawksmoron. You'll see why. Hawksmore Restaurant accidentally serves dinner wine worth nearly six grand. Ouch. A restaurant diner who ordered a nice bottle of red wine to go with their dinner got something a bit fancier than what they were expecting, a bottle worth $5,800. Now, again, errors happen, but sometimes your error is so bad that it, you know, it gets the okay for the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, and this was runner-up. The customer at Manchester, England, branch of steak chain Hawksmoor ordered a 2001 Chateau Pichon Longueville, Comtesse de Lalande, which I'm sure I did not pronounce right, which is listed at uh, $335, a PR company representing the restaurant informed the CNN. 
It was very busy night at the restaurant and very simple mistake. Irina Pervoric of Kitchen Communications said in an email, a member of staff picked up the wrong bottle, mistaking it for another Bordeaux of the same vintage. The wine went out and was served to the customer. The customer didn't know, and it was only afterward that one of the managers picked up what had happened. The restaurant later tweeted that the customer, who has not been identified, accidentally got given a bottle, uh, and uh, the, again, they want to muck it up, destroy its name once again, and it said it hoped that they enjoyed their evening. And to the member of the staff who accidentally gave it away, Chen up. One-off mistakes, and we love you anyway, hearts more added. And that is, you know, <laughs> that that's why I, one of the reasons I didn't give them the Dove Cap of the Month award, because they were so cool about it. Um, it features in the rarities section of Hawksmoor's menu and is the most expensive item on the list. The Cult Wines Investment website quotes influential wine critic Robert Parker Jr., who described the wine that was given as a brilliant success, as well as one of the wines of the vintage of 2001. And that, friends, as you can hear, brings us to the Dumped Cap of the Month Award. Wait, where's my dumb music? Here we go. Now, remember, you can donate to the show at the correct views on Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me, I put towards the show. You can donate that through PayPal. And basically, as soon as I saw this one, it was a no-brainer. I was absolutely aware of who was going to get the Dump Cap of the Month Award. Yes, it was really that bad. I knew it immediately. So here we go. Here's our music. All right. Are you ready for this one? Remember, how many of you remember when nutty Nancy Pelosi called Ben Carson, of course, who is a black man, I called Ben Carson a white supremacist. Anybody remember that? <laughs> well, hello, Carlo. Well, this one come, this one ranks right up there. It was originally from the Daily Caller. I found it here on Prison Planet. Ehan Omar calls Stephen Miller a white nationalist. Trump Jr. hits back immediately. Let's see. Let's see if she could have been right. Shall we? Democratic Minnesota Rep. Ilhan Omar called White House Senior Advisor Stephen Miller a white nationalist Monday, and Donald Trump Jr. fired back almost immediately. Omar quoted a Splinter News article, which, among other things, referred to Miller as a white nationalist and a fascist, and suggested he'd like to point anti until until the Hun to lead the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency. Now, keep in mind, fascists. Well, we know that they did. Come on, let's go back to our history books. What did they do under Hitler? That's right, they tended to kill Jews. The freshman Democrat, who wins the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, also added her own comment, claiming that it was an outrage that he had any say in policy appointments. But as a member of Omar's critics quickly pointed out, Miller happens to be Jewish. That's right, Omar is calling a Jewish man a white supremacist, a fascist. Yes, fascists kill Jews. Yes, that's why she won the Dove Cap of the Month Award. <coughs> Listen to some of these uh, replies. Arthur Schwartz on Twitter wrote, Very on brand for notorious Jew-hating bigot Ehan to be smearing and attacking a Jewish man like Stephen Miller. <coughs> Harry, uh, I think it's Kretcherian, wrote, Yes, a Judaism uh, yeah, yes, Judaism, the first sign of Nazi white supremacy. Very smart, Ihan. Kylie Morris wrote, you do know he's Jewish, right? Trump Jr. was no exception. I see that the head of the Farrakhan fan club, meaning Ahan, took a short break from spewing her usual anti-Semitic bigotry today to accuse a Jewish man of being a white nationalist because she apparently has no shame. Some of Omar's previous statements, viewed by many as anti-Semitic, have earned her public reviews from members of both parties. So I'm going to go to screen share for you here on Google. You could subscribe there, guys, on the Media Speaks if you would like to see the screen shares when they pop up. Uh, you on Facebook, I'm going to just post it when I get around to uh, when I when I 
get all everything uh, rendered onto Facebook. And I'm going to show everyone the dunk cap real quick too. So here is right here is the award, so you, you can see it. Okay, now here is what it says. The Dunk Cap of the Month Award. Not since nutty Nancy Pelosi suggested that Ben Carson was a racist, whilst being black, has anyone proven to be as doltish as you? For not knowing that Jewish Stephen Miller couldn't be a white nationalist, you win the Dunk Cap of the Month. Wear it over your hijab with pride, not white pride. I guess I would have made her the... The dunce hijab of the month, but my hijab making skills are just not up to par, so I didn't feel comfortable with it. I didn't want to be bigoted. Um, here we have, of course, it says dunce. Uh, my little drawing of Hitler here. It says Omar fired from recruitment drives. Yes. Um, here I drew a skinhead. Little Nazi sign says now hiring. Where is it? There we go. You can see it. And uh, he says. Stephen Miller may not join. Um, here, of course, I drew a synagogue. And out of it is a voice saying, it seems that Omar has lost her mind. And then, of course, the last of the drawings. Oh, my. What is next, Omar? Black KKK members? Now, this and when I get it printed, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award is going to be sent to Omar, and all of that costs money, so if you'd like to help me out, help pay for these to be done, if you enjoy me doing them every month, I'm down to just two shows, I'm doing two a month, and uh, if you like them, please donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Good night, friends, God bless.